Pushing it. Good morning, prophetess. Good morning. Good morning, my grandbaby. So, you know, I am so grateful to be here this day. And I tell you, I feel like a pineapple, y'all. I do. I didn't say you got hair on top and you got your, oh, your yellow on. I feel good today. I'm telling you, I feel good. So I am so wonderful. I am ever eternally grateful to sit here before you all and give you what the Lord has given me for this day because I'm telling you, I always have to inquire of the Lord of what he would have me to say. And so I always inquire and I tell you when I begin to hear, it really surprises me. But how you doing, Brother Alex? And when he give it to me, he gives it to me first. And once he gives it to me, <clears throat> then I can give it out to others. So I thank God this morning for the opportunity to be able to do the work of what God has called me to do. Amen. So um, we're going to pray and we're going to get started and we're going to trust God that his word is going to fall on good ground in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, O oh God, just to say thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for another day. We thank you, Lord God, for the food that we are about to receive as it becomes nourishment to our bodies for Christ's sake. Yes, I said that because, see, we need the natural food, but more important, we need our spiritual meat. We need the meat of the word in the name of Jesus. It is time, O oh God, and we thank you that you are raising us up. You are growing us up, O oh God, to be all that you have called us to be, all that you have ordained us to be in the name of Jesus. So we thank you this morning, Lord God, that the gates of hell shall not prevail upon us. There's no weapon formed against us going to prosper in the name of Jesus. And every word that comes upon us, Lord God, that we right now, we rebuke it, we bind it in the name of Jesus. We smash it, we crush it to the ground, that it will not prosper in the name of Jesus, for there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, because you have given us the opportunity and the power, Lord God, to speak a word, decree a word, and it shall be so. So we decree and declare in the name of Jesus as joint heirs, O oh God, that there is no weapon formed against us, O oh God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that we are, Lord God, we are devil crushers, Lord God. We will crush the devil. We will annihilate the devil, and the devil will give. He will not give no place in our eyes. We give him nothing. We will not allow him to hinder us from what God is doing, but we can see clearly now, and most importantly, we can also hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us at this appointed time of this hour, and we just want to say thank you, God. We lift up this world to you in the name of Jesus, oh God, because you said that the government shall be upon your shoulder. For all the people think that it's all predicated on man, but man can do nothing, not unless you authorize, oh God. So Father, we just want to say thank you right now in the name of Jesus, as we stand and we stand, we stand and we with stand, Lord God, the fiery darts because we are dressed in the whole arm of God. Glory to God. And we thank you right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, for this world that we live in, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, as we lift up those who are mourning this day, oh God, those who may be grieving in their bodies, grieving in their spirit, don't know which way to go, don't know which way to turn, Lord God. Holy Spirit, we lift them up this day, oh God. We lift up the parents, the teachers, the, the first responders. We lift up those, oh God, who are home all 
all day long with the children and don't know what to do. Give them the strength. Give them the patience. Give them the endurance. Give them the wisdom. Give them the know-how in the name of Jesus of God because now they're having to be the, the babysitter, be the teacher, be the substitute, be the everything, Lord God. And this is so new to so many people, Lord God. So I plead the blood of Jesus that you give them what they need, oh God. That not a parent will snap on their children. That not a parent will hurt their child, Lord God. Because they don't know what to do when they're at their wit's end. And Lord God, when they're with their wit's end, I plead the blood of Jesus that they begin to open up their mouths and they begin to pray. And when they begin to pray, they begin to, Lord God, steal the enemy, Lord God. When the enemy thought he was going to come in, you just came in, Holy Spirit, like a flood. And you have annihilated the works of the devil. Because that's what you have told us, that we will destroy the works of the devil. So I thank you, God, that we are destroyers, oh God. We will destroy every every hindrance, every fiery dart of the wicked one in the name of Jesus. So we thank you that through it all, we are more than conquerors in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank each and every one of you for joining me this day, whether you're joining me now or whether you're going to come in later. I speak double blessings of abundance upon you and your family in the name of Jesus. I say taste and see that the Lord is good. It's his mercy and doeth forever. It's his mercy and glory to God. His mercy is renewed each and every morning. So guess what? We got another mercy. We got another day of grace. It's all of God's unmerited favor. We didn't do anything. We did nothing to deserve it. We did nothing to earn it. But glory to God. God saw fit that he wanted to give us some gifts, y'all. He gave us some spectacular gifts, which is his grace and his mercy. So I just come by to let you know, no matter what you're going through or what is going to come towards you, guess what? God has already equipped you that you can take that thing. It said that the kingdom of God suffer violence, but the violent take it by force. Guess what? We are the ones who have to get violent in the spirit. We are the ones who have to tell the devil, not on my watch, not the day devil, not my family, not my child, because see, you gotta learn how to decree and declare that as for me and my house, we are gonna serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. It don't matter what it looks like. It don't matter what come or would make. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And that's what you got to decree and declare in the name of Jesus. It don't matter what comes up your front door. It don't matter what comes through your front door. Guess what? If that's your declaration, that's your independence. And we got to take our independence in the name of Jesus. Good morning, Elder. And so here it is. We got to be in the right position and the right posture if we want to receive from God. Glory to God. And so we once again, for the beginning of the year, the Lord said we got to be intentional. Be intentional is that we got to do this thing on purpose. We got to walk this walk out on purpose. We can't do it half haphazardly. We can't do a little dab of here and a little dab of do. We cannot do that. We got to stand. We got to walk. We got to talk the talk because see, sometimes if your walls can talk, your walls will tell on you. Your walls will tell on you. Uh-uh-uh. We got to get this thing together in the house and out the house because this is an inside job. Glory to God. It's an inside job. So we got to break out of who we are. And God, dress me in your presence. God, dress me in your glory. God, dress me. Glory to God. Let them dress you for the day. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when you allow him to dress you for the day, you can't lose with the stuff he use, y'all. Come on now, somebody. Give me some hearts. Give me some flowers. I don't want no weeds, y'all, because we've got so many weeds out there. You know what I'm saying? But I thank God for what he's doing at this appointed time in my life and your life. And, you know, so therefore, we right now, we also, we still being intentional because we're being intentional in our hearing. And his word that we've been bringing the last few weeks is, do you hear what I hear? You know, and when he gave that to me, you know, it just brought it back to me that, you know, you can go to a church. You know, you can go to a small church. You can go to a mega church. But you can go to church, y'all. And everybody's sitting there, sitting there, hearing the same thing. But always they sitting there hearing the same thing. Guess what? At the end of the day, everybody's not going to do what they've heard. But they've heard it. It says, if any man have an ear, let 
doesn't hear what the spirit of the Lord would say to him. But if your spirit don't bear witness with his spirit, you didn't hear it. You just got dressed. You just got dressed up for the day. And I remember when I was working, you know, a lot of guys, you know, we used to work in uniform. So you knew what you was going to wear at work before you went to work. So it was no giving. You couldn't change your uniform. You couldn't add to your uniform. But when Sundays came, them jokers would talk about, oh, yeah, I had my diamond rings on and I had my, my watches on. And, you know, they went in their luxury. They went to dress up. They went to church to dress up. They didn't go to church just so they could go and worship. Now, some of them did. Some of them did. But a lot of them went to dress up. It's like Monday through Friday, whatever the work week was for them, they in uniform. But when time came at the end of the day, when they knew Sunday was my day, oh, I'm going up there in my designer suit, my, my, uh, my, my designer shoes. I'm going up there flashing. And it went flashing, y'all. But here it is, came Monday, they did the same thing all over again. They fussing and cussing and doing whatever it is that they do. That's what they did. But see, my thing is, do you hear what I hear? So if we're hearing the same thing, something about us should kind of look alike a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Although we all got our own individual fingerprints, but something should resonate because we're hearing the same word. And when you're hearing the same word, you should be going the same direction. It says, how can two walk together unless we agree? And you got to agree, I want this word. I want the meat of the word. I need this word for all life and godliness because without this word, I am nothing. I can do nothing. But I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And I want the Holy Spirit to strengthen me. I need the Holy Spirit like you need the Holy Spirit to wash us with the water of the word. Because Jesus is coming back. Ready or not, he's coming. But will he find you faithful? Will he find me faithful? And that's what we want to do. Can he and will he and shall he find us faithful? And that's what he wants to do. He wants his faithful sons and daughters. So some of us, guess what? Listening should be taught in a classroom. Why? Because we got two ears and we just don't know how to listen. We get to the point where listening should be an art. Listening should be a skill. But we listen to defend ourselves. We listen to defend ourselves. Haven't even heard it out. Haven't even thought it out. Haven't even considered it, but we're listening to defend ourselves. And that's not good listening skills because that's not listening. That is not even hearing because we get so on the defensive that we cannot hear what the spirit of the living God would say to us. And I thank God that still in these days that he still use a man and a woman on earth to put out his word. That's why you have the fivefold ministry. That's why you have preachers and teachers. That's why you you have to be an astute student of the word. And a student sits there and they listen, they learn, they study to show themselves approved of a workman who's not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because when it's all said and done at the end of the day, because of what you did and what you didn't do, there's going to be some judgment. There's going to be some ramifications and some repercussions. Because, you know, God said, do this. Nope. Do that. Nope. Do this. Nope. And we're so quick to say no. But one thing I know when you know and you understand obedience, it's the blessings of obedience that will bring you to the presence of God, will bring you in the spirit of God, will bring you to the things of God, bring you to your purpose in God. And it would open up the wind of heaven that there's not room enough for you to receive it. That's what happens when the blessings of the Lord comes upon you. And you say, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's what he wants. He wants us to have that heaven on earth experience. And some people, because they won't listen, will have a hell on earth experience. Why? Because you're not listening. Why? Because you just don't want to. Why? Because you have not crucified your flesh. Why? Because you have not given God the opportunity for Jesus is Lord over your life. And when you allow him to be Lord over your life, guess what? It's called surrender. I surrender all. And when we surrender all, guess what? It leaves nothing for my flesh. 
nothing for my flesh because my flesh cannot serve God. Your flesh and my flesh is enmity towards the will of God. It will not glory in the presence of God. So we got to learn how to sit and listen. We got to learn how to sit and stay still. Say, so be still and know that I am God. Be still. But we're in such a world where we get busy. And then we also in a world that here it is, if you can't sit still and all oh, you so busy, all oh, you all. Know, oh. Next thing you know, they labeling you, they labeling your children, they labeling your grandchildren. Oh, it's something wrong with you. We gotta put you on some meds because you got ADHD, you got ADD or whatever. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. I decree and I declare right now in the name of Jesus. If those words have been spoken over you, your offspring, your grandchildren, anybody in your family, I decree and I declare right now that the devil is alive and that they are healed, whole, and grateful and sanctified and set apart to do the work of the ministry. And yes, they are truly focused on the things of God and know those things do not live in their body. So everything that they're trying to say, we cancel that assignment right now in the name of Jesus. Why? Because the blood of Jesus still works. He said a two or three touch and agree. Guess what? He's there. So I'm touching and agreeing right now that your children, it may be you, it may be me, that we are the healed and walking and protecting in our health in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah in Jesus name. And this morning I'm bringing a scripture out of the new out of the passion translation. And this here is what I'm uh God gave it to me. A lot of pastors don't talk about it. It's like it's the last book, but we ain't talking about that today, y'all. But he gave me Revelations 117. And this is out of the Passion Translation. And this here is John. John was a disciple. Who walked with Jesus. He was the last of the disciples who walked with Jesus. The others had been martyred. All kind of things had happened to him. But he was jailed. God had need of him. So here it is. When I saw him, I fell down at his feet as good as dead. But he laid his right hand on me and I heard his reassuring voice saying, don't yield to fear. I am the beginning and I am the end. Verse 18, the living one, I was dead, but now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys that unlock death in the unseen world. Guess what? When he put that hand on John, he put that right hand on John. He empowered John. He empowered him. Because, see, John was on an island of Patmos. And when he was on that island of Patmos, surrounded all by water. Which, because it's surrounded by water, nobody can get in without authorization. And nobody can get out without authorization. But glory to God, no matter where we go, you make your bed in hell, Jesus, the Holy Spirit is there. You make your bed in heaven, the Holy Spirit is there. There's nowhere we can go, glory to God, that he is not there. He is always there. But are you always listening? But see, John was listening, even in the midst of the trial, the turmoil that he was facing. He was listening because he had need of him. And he was on his assignment, y'all. And there's some assignments that we have that we're just not doing our assignment. And we need to do our assignment because, see, sometimes when you don't do your assignment... And I'm guilty as charged when you don't do your assignment. I want you to know there is no peace whatsoever. You can try to go through the day, oh, la di da di la di da di No, until you get on your assignment, there will be no peace. But when you don't do your assignment, the Holy Spirit will find somebody else to do what you won't do. And so, therefore, we got to get to the point where, Lord, I want to do what you have called me to do. And also, I want to read Revelations 1.17 also in the Amplified. And it says, when I saw him, 
I fell at his feet as though dead, and he placed his right hand on me and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last absolute deity. He's the first and last, it's the absolute, which means absolute Jesus. That ain't nothing else coming after him. At the absolute deity, the son of God, verse 18, and the ever living, one living in and beyond time and space, y'all. I die, but see, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of absolute control and victory over death and of Hades and the realm of the dead. Guess what? Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking. Come on, y'all. What more can you ask for? He said, I am. I am. I am. And he also said, because he is, don't be afraid. He's still telling us today, no matter what is going on, don't be afraid because I am is still with you. He said, one living beyond all time and space. One day as a thousand and thousand days as one. Come on, y'all. All time and space. It blows my mind because guess what? He's a God of multiplication. Do you hear what I hear? He's telling us not to be afraid. He's telling us just like John is in prison, some of y'all are in prison. But guess what? It's time to break out the prison gates. Because although John's physical body was in prison, John was never in prison in his mind. Come on, somebody. And we got to get to the point where we have to understand Revelations is the last book of the Bible. And people don't want to read it, don't want to talk about it because it's like, ooh. It's just too much. It's too much. And guess what? It is a lot to handle. That's why he said to John, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And he knows today some people when you be living in fear when they read the book of Revelations. But guess what? Whether you're afraid or living in fear, it's going to happen with you or without you. So it's time to get it right. It's tight, y'all, but it's time to get it right. In Revelations, it's a supernatural letter given divinely to Jesus' disciple John. And Revelation speaks of our future and it concerns our present time here. And John wasn't killed as some of the others had been, like I said earlier. But he was tossed in prison on that island. And it brings me to, uh, I thought about the agenda reveal. And it says we get excited to find out about the sex of the baby. Everybody come together and we can't wait. But guess what? Revelation tells us, and it's very descriptive in revealing our current day and our future to come. It's a reveal. It's a reveal. And so therefore, everybody don't like the reveal of what's coming. Because it's like, this is just too much. But guess what? John reminds me of Job. They, Job was, was oh, okay, John survived, but the other disciples didn't. With Job, every time an incident took place, one survived. And one came back and told Job what was going on. And that's how it is. Are you the one that God wants to use in your family? Are you the only one saved, sanctified, and set apart? Because see, sanctification is one that's set apart. Are you the only one in your family? Are you the only one in your community? Are you the only one in your workplace? Are you the only one, in, even in your church? Like I said, I had co-workers, they went to church, but the church never went with them. They were there, they were spectators, they was looking good, y'all. And one thing I can say back in the day before I became a Christian, I used to party with some of them. When I say the party, it was a fashion show. It wasn't even a party. It was a fashion show. Whose bling bling was better than my bling bling? Whose Stacy's or whose whatever was better than mine? They was sharp. But guess what? Are we now sharp in the spirit? Are we going to allow the Lord to have his way? Because, see, we are in a time of evil doings, and evil is at an all-time high. 
Oh my gosh. People everywhere, they're vicious, they're evil, they're malicious, they're hating, there's, there's all kind of crimes, there's cruelty, there's uh, cruelty to elders, cruelty to parents, there's stealing, there's cheating, there's lying, and there's uh, unforgiveness, and there's all this cyber crime. There's so much stuff in the world going on. And some of these people, they're underground. You don't know them. They're sitting right there in your neighborhood, your community. Some of them may even be sitting up in your house. Yeah, I said it. But you know, some of those crimes will be exposed. And some people, you won't even see the crimes being exposed. Crimes are being committed towards us all day long. It's, it's what we are, like cheap. Going to the slaughter? Yeah. That's how we are. And so you know what? One day, going back to the gender reveal, a baby will be revealed when they have the gender reveal. And so just like that day when that gender reveal, God is revealing everything that's in my heart and everything that's in your heart. And when those things are revealed, Understand who you are. Understand that some things you're going to have to clean them up because it's not right. Understand that some people can't handle the truth. And so then when they don't handle truth, there will be consequences. And so we cannot do the crime if you don't want the time. Because see, when you do Things we ain't got no business. There's consequences. So we cannot live reckless and get a God result. It doesn't happen. And John also, like I said, he was like Job. They were two blameless men who truly trusted God with their lives. And that's what we got to do. We got to learn how to trust God with our life. Because I know that my life is not my own. And I can do nothing without God. If he doesn't strengthen me, guess what? I can do nothing. But I rely on him. I depend on him. I look towards the hills from whence cometh my help, and my help cometh from the Lord. And when I decree and I declare a thing out of my mouth, I ain't taking that thing back. Because I'm believing God that he's going to do the work. That he's going to complete that work in me. Hallelujah. So I thank God for what he is doing. And so, therefore, because of the love and obedience, every test and trial, John and Job, they were able to overcome. They were able to overcome. And we, too, can overcome if we just trust God. And John was in prison on the island when he heard and he saw the vision he was described. He heard it. And he saw. And God is so sovereign, y'all, that he kept John in Job. And his supreme power is what was made available and is still being made available to us as born again believers. That no matter the task, no matter the trial, God is still in control, even in the midst of what we're going through in this life. He's still in control and through it all. We can still obtain his love, his peace, his joy in the midst of the storms of life if we have the right relationship. And see, that's the thing about it. Relationship is everything. And people don't understand relationship. It is vital that we have the right relationship. Because if we don't have the right relationship, the evil route is there. But I want the righteous route. So I can receive God's goodness in the evil day. Receive his protection. Receive his mercy. And so many Christians are locked in their mind where they have ears, but they won't do or they won't hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. And I was, you know, this came to my mind, Rikers Island. Rikers Island is a maximum security prison in New York. And it sits on 413 acres. And when it started out, Rikers Island was only 100 acres. And I still don't understand how did you build 
on an island. But you know, people are able to do all kind of things. Because when the man first bought Rikers, it was 100 acres. Now it's 413 acres. And so therefore, you got water all around it to deter people from going in and coming out. And so then I read that 39 people had escaped at Rikers Island, which is right in the Bronx, New York. 39 people escaped. Three of the 39 drowned. Four of the 39 were successful in their escape. And let's see, there was four, there's seven. So there'd be 32 of them was placed back in custody. So I believe that they tried to escape and it was placed back in custody. That if they had a sentence that was going to eventually end, they probably got double for when they're in trouble. That's why we got to be careful about what we do. And so I just believe that because it was surrounded by water, it was isolated, it was standing alone, we all get 24 hours a day. And I believe those four who escaped successful as they was in prison, I just believe that they heard conversations of those who didn't make it. They paid attention to details of their day, details of the guard's day, and they did body strengthening exercise daily. Because, see, I don't know how far Rikers is from the land, but guess what? You got to have upper body strength, y'all. If you're going to swim and not get tired, and keep, and so you know, when you're in prison, most of them, you know, what I see on television anyway, they pressing it, pressing it, pressing it in the gym all day long. They can't do nothing but anyway, but go to school and uh, get an education. And most of them exercise, 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 exercise. And that's what we got to do in the body of Christ. We got to exercise, exercise, exercise your muscles. God, what do you have me to do? God, what's in the word for me to do? God, where I find it in your word? God, where am I supposed to be? God, what corner am I supposed to do? God, who am I supposed to bless today? Because we're exercising who we are in him, we can hear him. And when we hear him, we can do what he has called us to do. So therefore, we got to get to the point that we got to get our mind, body, and souls in alignment. And we have to have strength for the journey. And those three who drowned, they didn't have strength for the journey. And we got to have strength for our journey, y'all. We got to have strength for the journey. Because, see, if we don't have strength for the journey because the day is evil, we're going to faint because we don't have much strength. And we don't always have time to call a lifeline. So you've got to get this thing for yourself. Because Satan is doing everything in his power to put fear in people's hearts. There's no self-control anymore with people. There's violence everywhere. And during this time, we are to lose our hope or our faith. And so I want to encourage you today. If you don't know what to do or how to pray, just begin to lift up your hands towards heaven. And as you just begin to lift up your hands towards heaven and call on the name of Jesus, he hears your voice and he hears your heart. And so, you know, I was reading a book the other day. In this book that I was reading, it talked about prayer. And it said the P, you know, I love acronyms. And it said the P was the praise. Praise God. No matter what's going on, lift up your hands, open up your mouth, Jesus. Just call on the name of Jesus. Even if you don't know the Lord and pardon of your sins, just call on the name of Jesus. He will answer you. So here it is, Jesus, the sweetest name I know. How you doing, Elder Linda? So good to see you. And all we got to do is know that when we begin to praise, it's the admiration and the expression of your love to the Father. Then it's the R. The R says to repent. Turn away from sin. And that's what we got to do. Just don't say the words. Be the word. Do the word. Repent. Turn away from sin. So you got your P. I'm praising. But okay, there's my R. I'm going to repent. 
Then I got my A. The A said, ask him. Ask him. We got to ask God. We ask him for, give me a new car, give me a new house, give me a new pair of shoes, give me this, give me that. No, we got to ask him. Ask God for a clean heart and a contrite spirit. Ask him for that. Ask him for the grace you need. Ask him for the mercy you need. Ask him for the peace you need. Ask him for the love you need to love that son, to love that daughter, to love that husband, or to love that wife. Ask him how to treat your neighbor right when all you want to do is cuss him. Ask him how to treat that boss right when all you want to do is cut him up. And then all of a sudden, the why, the why says yield. Yield means you got to stop if needed and necessary. And we have to learn how to yield our members because, see, we can get to the point. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. And every time you give somebody a piece of your mind, you keep leaving something for other people. You keep giving people the fragment. And you know what? I don't choose to leave fragments around anymore. Because, see, we got to learn how to pray. Praise, repent, ask, and yield. And I mean, that thing just, 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 just like, wow. It opened up something for me. It was a wow factor. And I was like, whoa, I like that. I like that. And I was like, God, that is so awesome. It's awesome. God's word is awesome. God's word is empowering. God's word is enlightening. God's word is exciting to me, y'all. It's exciting. So we got to learn how to open up our mouth. And see, this year is the world is going into Easter week, Resurrection Sunday. And I was like, God, this just seems so appropriate that we're going into Resurrection Sunday. And this is the word that you gave me for the people of God. And I was like, wow, he always know what he's doing. I just got to always wait on him because I don't have a clue, y'all. I get clueless. When I come here on Tuesday mornings, I'm clueless until he tells me. I go Thursday evenings, I'm clueless until he tells me. Then when I go to third Friday of the month for Friday night smackdown, I'm clueless until he tells me. I mean, I got 66 books and God knows how many chapters and words here. I just, oh, let me see where I'm going today. But I wait on him to hear from him. What do you want me to tell your people? What do you want to tell me? And when I hear it, then I have to go out and get it. So it's now time to surrender to Jesus Christ, for he died for us. And now is the time to come up under the protection and the shelter of Almighty God. And although John was on the alley called Patmos, he was persecuted for declaring that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and he's coming back. And he did not turn his ear, nor did he turn his back. Because, see, as he was being persecuted, and they said, we throwing you in the prison, he could have got to the point to say, no, 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 I denounce him. But he didn't. And because he was obedient, he started writing when he heard the voice of the Lord visiting him. When he saw the, uh, when he saw the visions, and then he began to speak. He sent them out. See, we thought that the male people, what is that, the, the, the post office, was just something, what, a couple of years, a hundred years ago or so? No, they have been delivery mail for years. Snail mail had been out in the time of John. John was out there, he was scribing everything that he saw. And although he was scribing everything that he saw, he was still able to get the word of God out. Because as he scribed it, he had somebody to take it out there to the seven churches that the Holy Spirit told him to take it to. He was obedient. He heard it, he did it, and God honored that. He honored that. And that's what we got to do. We got to hear it, be obedient, for God can honor us. And we got to get to the point to know no matter what is going on, we got to have the right attitude and we have to learn how to be consistent. And that's what it's all about. And that attitude and the consistency, it brought him to victory. And when we just become 
consistent and obedient, we too can live a victorious Christian life. And that's what God is calling. He's calling for obedience. That's why when I talked about earlier, repentance. Repentance will bring you to obedience. Repentance will bring you in the presence of Almighty God when you just begin to worship. When we just begin to let go and let God, honey, I'm going to tell you, if you ever been drunk or if you ever been high, how high can you go in the spirit of Almighty God? Come on now. When you get to the point where you love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your body, your soul, with everything within you, guess what? Honey, it will be the greatest high you've ever had. When I say God wants to blow your mind, he will woo, take you to a place you ain't never been in him. I'm telling you, I have been there. God has restored. God has healed some things that the canker, the locust, and the palmer worm have stolen out of my life. But I'm telling you, when I begin to hear what the spirit of the living God was saying, I begin to, ooh, Jesus, go Jesus, go Jesus, go Jesus. I just gave everything to him. It was like no holding back. You know, sometimes, well, you know, I want to give all myself to him. But guess what? I went and gave myself away so he could use me. Because I'll tell you and I'll tell you and I keep telling you, I was used by man. But guess what? It ain't nothing like being used by God. So when I sit here today, I can tell you that the gates of hell will not prevail. That weapon may Form, but that weapon won't prosper because I am sitting right now in the seat and doing the work that God has ordained me to do for such a time as this. And all he wanted some willing workers. He does not say, well, you know, uh, 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 no, Will, are you willing? Are you obedient? Are you ready? Just are you on your mark? Are you set? Are you ready to go? He wants some willing workers. He wants some who's ready to go. And see, one thing about a vision a, a vision is a revelation. And that's how we got the book of Revelation. A, re a vision is a revelation. And they got a revelation from God. And that revelation, it was supernatural, y'all. And God still does supernatural miracles. He still want to put his super on top of your natural. Because that's what we are in him now. We're supernatural beings. We're supernatural beings. And he want to put that together to make you bigger than what you ever thought you could be. Ready, light, camera, action. Are you ready to take action for what God wants to do in your life? Or are you going to be like a shrink wrap? You're not going to expand your horizons. Not going to expand your mind. But God is looking for some faithful people because he's already laid out the plan for us. The plan for my life and for your life has already been planned. I ask people all day long, what are you doing with your dash? Because see, there's a day to be born and there's a day to die. But there's a dash in between. What are you doing with your dash? How are you treating people? How are you loving people? God said he wants us to treat everybody right. We got to have the right attitude, y'all. And when we have that right attitude, God will open up the window of heaven. He will pour into you into me so that we will be a blessing and give out to others. And Revelations 1.3 says that in the New Living Translation, God blesses the one who reads the word of this prophecy to the church and he blesses all who listen to its message and obey what it says for the time is near. Told you, obedience. He blesses. Didn't tell me. Didn't tell you. He blesses to all who is near. So when you walk with the courage and the confidence of God, it is then that you're not living your life in fear. Because so many people are fearful. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Because he said that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And if you're double-minded, that is not a sound mind. That's a fickled mind. One that's all over the place. Uh, uh, if I woulda, shoulda, coulda. Uh, I don't know. You gotta make up your mind sometime or another. And I made up my mind as for me and my house, we gonna serve the Lord. 
I made up my mind. I'm going to serve God. And you got to draw the line in the sand for you. It don't matter how crazy your family may be or how crazy your kids may be. It don't matter. Would they say heterosexual, metrosexual, whatever? It don't matter. Love covers a multitude of sin. Love covers. We got to love them, y'all. Don't kick them out to the curb and abandon them. You got to love them. And then you got to also show them the grace that God has shown in you. Do you hear what I hear? This is grace, y'all. This is grace. For there are many gods have crept into the earth and they appear to have the answer, but they don't. But there's only one true and living God who died for all of humanity and rose again on the third day. He got up. Now it's our time to die to our world of lust and desire and to seek, inquire, and to follow Jesus. Man and his idols will fail you, but Jesus will never fail you. Because see, when he talks about we got to die to our flesh, Galatians 2.20. New living. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if I keep the law, I could make us right with God. And then there's no need for Christ to die. I'm glad he died for me. And I pray that you're glad that he died for you. So therefore, guess what? Because he died for you and for I. That was his love, y'all. That was his love. And that was his love. That was his covering. That was his shelter. That was his protection. That was his abundance. That was his grace. And the thing is, God only had one son. Oh, my God. His only begotten son. That he gave him up for you and I. I don't know about you, but that's a whole lot to do. That's a whole lot of love that you're going to give your only child up. That's a whole lot. And I thank God that we now, all he says is get rid of all your earthly stuff. And that's what it is, earthly stuff. Get rid of it. Let him come on the scene. And John 18, 36 says, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom, but if it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. And that's where we are. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And this is Jesus talking to Pilate. Pilate didn't know what to think of Jesus. And that's how it should ought to be with your life and mine. People should not know what to think of you and I. Who are you again? Oh, you want to know who I belong to? I belong to Jesus. You got to tell him. But then again, let your life speak for you. Let your light so shine so that men may see. They see something about you is different. When, when, when men revile against you, you ain't cussing them back. Guess what? They look real stupid standing up there cussing by themselves. Sometimes you just got to turn your back and keep walking. And that's what we got to do. Just keep walking. Keep it moving. It takes a lot because, you know, something could have been boiling. So what? Let it boil. But turn the fire off, okay? So what the heat been turned up? That's what the devil is doing, turning it up. He's turning the heat up so he can destroy your testimony. And what your testimony is destroyed, guess what? Gotcha. That's what he's saying. Gotcha. And it's going to take a whole lot of damage control to be able to win people back. So, praise God. Verse John 18, 37. Pilate said, so you are a king. Jesus responded, you say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth 
recognize what I say is true. So many people don't like the truth, don't want the truth. How they say, you can't handle the truth. And they can't. They can't handle the truth. And Isaiah 44 and 6 says, this is what the Lord says. Israel's king and redeemer, the Lord of heaven's army. I am the first and the last. There is no other God. 1 John 4, 4. But you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. The spirit that lives in you and I is greater than the spirit that lives in the world. It did not say that it was great. It said it was greater. It gave emphasis. And because it's greater, guess what? It sets you and I above the crowd. Glory to God. It sets us above. The Bible says we are the head and not the tail above, only never beneath. Who are you? Do you hear what I'm saying? In Hebrews 727, I'm sorry, 725, it says it like this. Hebrews 725, therefore he is able to once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. He lives forever to intercede for you and I. The spirit of God makes intercession for you and I daily, y'all. Daily, minute by minute, piece, what, second by second. The spirit of God makes intercession. So because the Spirit of God makes intercession for you and I, we only error because of our own free will. We only error because I want to give you a piece of my mind. We only error because I want to put my flesh on the throne. We only error because you take your eyes off of God. But I want to keep my eyes on God. I want to keep my eyes on the prize, y'all. Praise God. Anyway, praise God. I thank God for what he's doing in my life. I thank God for what he's doing in your life. I thank God for abundance of his grace and abundance of his love and abundance of his peace. We are going into the resurrection uh, Sunday. I'm telling you, don't let it be that your life is in vain. Let it be that whatever it is God has told you to do, whatever it is God has told you to say, do it. Say it. It took me a long time to do it. I mean, I loved them. Just like I know you love them. But sometimes we don't think that we are good enough. We don't think that we are equipped enough. But all he wants you to do is just say, here I am. Because he knows where you are anyway. He locates you all the time. But have you located yourself? Praise God. Anyway. Oh, wow, I'm just so filled up, y'all. All the glory belongs to God. That we are a lighthouse. We are a beacon of light in a darkened world. Don't let your candle go out. Continue to be that bright light that somebody needs you. And when they come and they call, let them know I'm available. I'm available. Thank you, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, O oh God. We make ourselves available. We thank you, Lord God, that your son Jesus died on the cross, O oh God, for our sins, that we may have the right to the tree of life. We thank you, God, that you are the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Holy Spirit, we ask, O oh God, that each and every day when we would crucify this flesh, that we would die to sin and die to who we are. That it's no longer us, but it's all of who you want us to be, O oh God. For you are truly the best thing that has ever happened to us. We thank you, God, as we yield the right away, as we will praise you, as we will repent, as we will be asking, as we will yield, oh God. And at the end of the day, that's our prayer, oh God. And we thank you that you still answer prayer, oh God. Holy Spirit, have your way in the master's name of Jesus, oh God, until it fits your will that you see fit that we're back here again on Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, God, for all things. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for each and every one who have come upon this broadcast today, those who will come at a later date.
those who would even share it, Lord God, with their loved ones and share it in the name of Jesus. That you will bless them with unlimited harvest in the precious name of Jesus. And don't forget coming up in May, May 14th and May 15th, starting at 7 o'clock Friday, I'm sorry, 7.30 that Friday evening, we will have our gutsy family conference. If God understands the trial strengthens you, I'm telling you, it's going to be awesome. I will have my flyer out within the next couple of weeks. Invite, 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 invite. We're going to be on Zoom and we're also going to be Facebook Live. So praise God and I thank God for you and for your family. And you will have a blessed, safe, and a prosperous day in Jesus' name. Amen. To God be the glory. This is Prophetess Deborah Smith Adams of Born Again to Rise Ministries. We are a ministry of healing, deliverance, and restoration. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.